Hey friends, welcome to today's video. My name is Stephanie and today I have a couple of nail art tutorials for you. So I know it is so long overdue since I've done another one of these compilation style videos. I do share a couple of tutorials, but mainly when I upload them as shorts here on my channel, just because I already create that content for Instagram or TikTok. So it's just easy enough to re-upload it here but I just haven't done another compilation video, which I think is pretty useful or helpful maybe because it's a little bit slower, there's a voiceover, so I'm able to share a little bit more step-by-step -step instructions or some tips that I might have for certain looks because I would like to think the looks that I do aren't really that hard, but I mean, like everything, it just takes practice. So even if it's not the cleanest, sharpest nail art you've ever done, it's still fun that you tried. And so I hope that these tutorials are easy enough to follow along and that you just are proud of what you create. So I have six looks for you today and they start off a little easier and then get a little harder depending on, I guess, like the size that you do things. And some of them are going to require some tools like nail art brushes or dotting tools, but you can use whatever you have, whether it's bobby pins or toothpicks. I have definitely used that before for a lot of my looks, so it's definitely doable, but yeah, let's just get into the looks. The first look we're doing is this really beautiful, but also very easy aura nail design. This is very similar to the blush nails. If you just used a pink shade, it's easy blush nails, but I'm gonna be using a little bit of purple and then those star glitters to make it more of an aura vibe. So we're basically just doing a radial gradient. So I start by applying my pink polish on my makeup sponge in a circle and then outline that with my purple polish. And on my thumb, I already have a base coat and then a sheer base. I personally love using Cirque Chiffon, which I'm also using as an outer ring to kind of blend the purple with the sheer that's already on my nail. So we have our three circles here and then we're gonna look at the placement and start dabbing. So the first coat is definitely very light and you could totally stop here if you wanted, but I did want to build up the colors a little bit more and also make it a little bit bigger. So I am going to be kind of dabbing a little more on the sides of my nail just to expand the radius of my aura. So once you're happy with the color buildup, you can move on either with just top coat but I decided to add some cute little star glitters just for some little iridescence. So I added two of the glitters in opposite corners using Cirque's What a Stud pickup tool. And then I finished this off with a thick layer of glossy top coat. And it really softens the sponging, it smooths everything out, and it just looks so, so pretty. So I absolutely love how this turned out, and I can't wait to do a full mani like this. It was so, so fun and so much easier than I thought it was going to be. Next up, we have this really easy jelly nail art look that is inspired by rose quartz, but you can also turn it into any other kind of gemstone look, assuming you have the corresponding jelly shade. So if you wanted amethyst nails, you'll use a purple jelly or jade nails, a green jelly. But for this look, I'm going to be using the shade rose quartz from Cirque Colors. And I start by doing two layers of this just to have a slightly more opaque base. It's still going to look a little bit squishy, but it's just not going to be sheer if you only did one coat. For the veining, I'm going to be using Cirque Colors Linen, which is this really pretty, slightly off-white jelly kind of shade. And I start by wiping off the majority of the polish off of the brush, so I have just a little amount to work with. And I start creating these lines across my nail and sort of swiping away at them, just to create this really soft but free-flowing veining effect. You can obviously look up a reference photo or if you have an actual crystal, I do have a rose quartz sphere, but 
I kind of wanted to show you that even without a solid reference, you can just create some lines and it'll look good. So since you are working with a small amount of polish, it is going to dry faster. So once it does dry, you can go in with a second layer of white to add a little bit more opacity to your veining. And I just personally like using a jelly, crelly kind of white as opposed to an opaque white just because I like that softer effect. So I just did the one layer of veining and then went in with rose quartz again just to sort of encapsulate it. And I think this looks so beautiful and so soft and romantic because of this pink shade. And I'm just a huge fan. I think it's super easy enough to do with just a couple of layers of your jelly polish. You could do another layer of veining or use a more opaque white if you want it to stand out more. But I really like this soft, almost smoky effect. So yeah, absolutely a huge fan of gemstone nails and I definitely need to do all of them. <laughs> Next up, we have one of my favorite designs, and it is a gradient French tip. So you just need a small brush and a couple of polishes of your choice. I usually pick either three or four shades, but you just want them to be pretty close together. This blue shade, as beautiful as it is, I think was a little too dark, so it kind of made it hard to blend in as seamlessly as the other shades that I picked. But yeah you just want to make sure that the shades you choose are definitely very close to each other so they can create a smooth gradient effect so i'm starting with the darkest shade on one side of my nail and i'm basically painting a quarter of the way in to my free edge and i'm trying to follow along my smile line before i go in with my next shade and as you can see it's not really blending in that's going to be the next layer this layer is more so the color placement and kind of drawing out your french tip so again you're just going to keep going in with the next shade and doing the next quarter of your nail don't worry too much about the blending just yet you can overlap it a little bit but it really is going to look better with the more coats that you do. Here on the first coat of everything, you can see I pretty much have my shape down for the most part and the color placement is all there. So we just let this dry for a little bit before going in with our second coat. So now with our second coat, like I mentioned before, the blue was a little hard to blend in. So I am just focusing on trying to blend in these two colors at first. So. You just need to go back and forth a couple of times. I will say it probably is a lot easier to clean your brush in between each use, just so you're not kind of contaminating this other side. Because as you can see, I sort of got a little bit of blue in here when it's not supposed to be there. But you know, at the end of the day, all of these colors are beautiful and ultimately this is just a really fun look that even if there are a couple of mistakes or it's not perfect it's still gonna look absolutely beautiful so yeah here is the second coat you can see it's definitely a little bit more blended so you definitely can go over this with another coat if you wanted to especially to kind of sharpen the smile line i didn't end up doing that i just used some top coat to sort of smooth everything out and i think the colors are still beautiful even if this isn't the most perfect french tip Next up, we have another favorite design of mine. This was originally done by Manicured over on Instagram a couple years ago, but I have been obsessed and would recreate it every so often. It's this beautiful, whimsical butterfly French tip. So I'm going to be using the shade by Polish. It's just such a really pretty ethereal type of shade. So honestly, this could also be like fairy wings, but I know mine have antenna so it's more of a butterfly whatever you want you're basically going to use your polish to create this v or chevron french tip and i like doing this in two layers just to build up the shade a little bit more so it stands out but if you're using an opaque cream you probably only need one coat and then you're going to go in with a detail brush i really love using the ones from winstonia this is the berry wine trio 
and either using black polish or black acrylic paint, you're going to start by outlining your butterfly wings. As you saw, I did apply a little too much pressure and so I kind of already dented my wings a little bit and I am going to do that in just a minute again, but it's totally fine because top coat just saves the day. So yeah, this angle that I'm filming at is not the most comfortable to be painting, but just get in a position that is most comfortable for you to repeat these steps. So after you outline your wings, you can add your little antenna and if you want, you can stop there. But if you want to add some detail to your wings, I think the easiest way to do that is just to create a Y shape. So I start by just making a line from the outer wing to the body and then this shorter line from the top to that middle line, if that makes sense. So then I repeat that on the other side and that is your butterfly wing. Obviously you can make it more fancy with the more kind of lines or if you add white dots to the corners, but I definitely think this is like the easiest way to create some butterfly wings. So yeah, absolutely love this look. Definitely another favorite. Next up, we have this adorable gingham print design. I think this is so, so cute, especially if you're going on a picnic, but you can use whatever colors you want. You just wanna make sure you have your white base and then two shades of the same color. So I'm gonna be using a light blue and a dark blue. You'll also need a longer detail brush. I just find that the longer it is, the easier it is to create those straight lines because you can just kind of lay the brush flat down onto your nail and then drag it, if that makes sense. So if you don't have a longer brush, you just need to be a little bit more careful with your shorter strokes. But yeah, you're basically going to start by creating the vertical stripes of your gingham print. So once you have your two stripes painted, you can start filling them in. And from there, you can move on to creating your next stripe. So I try to envision the white stripe in between to be the same width as the blue stripe that I just painted because you want the stripes to be equidistant from each other. If one is a little bit too wide, you can just use the other color to kind of paint over it. I was pretty happy with these, so I decided to move on to the horizontal stripes. And these can be a little bit trickier, again, mainly because of the angle that I'm painting them at. But I do just start by painting a line in the very middle just to kind of mark where I want the height to be. And then I create the lines from the sides of my nails coming in. So as you saw, I kind of started working my way up as I was painting. So that way I'm making the height of this stripe kind of the same width as the vertical stripes that I painted. I really hope that that's making sense. You basically are just trying to envision creating a bunch of tiny squares everywhere. <laughs> so once you have that pattern down, you go in with the tiniest brush that you have. This one is also from the Berry Wine Trio. You could also use a toothpick if you're careful, but you go in with your darker polish and fill in the little boxes where the two blue lines overlap and that is what will create your gingham print so yeah hopefully the instructions weren't too confusing if they were i'm so sorry but you could just mute me go back and watch it because i think you can just follow along and yeah here it is the completed look it is so cute once you top coat it definitely a little time consuming but i think it's just so worth it and lastly, we have the most adorable froggy mix and match design. I did this a couple years ago. I saw it on Pinterest. It is just the cutest thing. So you're going to start with your green polish for your froggies. I'm going to be using a dotting tool for this look, but you can also use a brush if you wanted or a toothpick, whatever tools that you have. But you're going to start by creating your half moon kind of shape. And once you're happy with the size, you go in and add these two little dots for the eyes. So let this dry down first and then go in with a slightly smaller dotting tool with some black polish to create the eyes. You kind of want a little bit of green around it, but if you can't get it, that's fine too. Then go in with your smallest detail brush to create a little smile. 
so adorable, absolutely precious. And that gives you the black dots for the eyes enough time to dry. And then go in with the tiniest dotting tool you have to add some whites. And I added some blush. Oh my God, they are just the cutest thing. So you can add more froggies to your nails if you want. But like I said, I'm doing more of a mix and match thing. So I'm adding some flowers, some hearts, some dots to fill in the space. And I just think this is just the most adorable springtime kind of look it is just so so cute and you can really have so much fun with the different colors that you use or different motifs i did a similar version but for fall so i used some mushroom and some leaves it was just so so cute so yeah i hope you try this out so that wraps up my nail art tutorials I definitely can't wait to hear what you all think of the looks that I shared because I just love these looks. I think they're so cute and fun and perfect for this time of year where it's like kind of between spring and summer because there's just so much color and so much variety that you can do with switching the colors to your liking. But yeah, definitely let me know if you're gonna be inspired enough to try one of these looks. I would love to see them, especially if you post it on Instagram. You can tag me, but it'll probably be easier to use the hashtag Polished Yogi just because my notifications can get a little crazy sometimes. So it's definitely a lot easier to go through that. But yeah, definitely let me know if you have any other specific requests for nail art looks because I would love to do another kind of summer compilation one, but I feel like the one that I did last year already kind of covers a lot of what I would already do. So I'm just a little lost on <laughs> what kind of nail art designs or tutorials you would want to see but if you do have any requests of course just leave them down below and i can either do them as shorts if there's only a couple of them or if there are several then i can make another compilation video but otherwise i'll probably wait until like the fall or maybe like a major kind of holiday to do a few inspired seasonal holiday looks. Leave me any and all thoughts that you have down below in the comments so we can chat about it. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.